Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at the importance of photosynthetic pigments in photosynthesis. The second part here, thin layer chromatography, we'll do in a second video. So from the previous video, we should remember that the chloroplast has a lot of thylakoid membranes in there. And that creates a large surface area for these photosynthetic pigments to be attached to. So these photosynthetic pigments, they are arranged in structures called photosystems. Now, uh, as we go through photosynthesis, you'll learn that there are two photosystems that we need to be aware of, photosystem two and one, which are involved within the light dependent reaction. Now, within these photosystems, we have pigments, and these pigments are arranged in a funnel shape called the antennae complex, which you can see within this image here. Now, this is all to do with absorbing different wavelengths of light, and the primary pigment, which is here within the reaction center, is chlorophyll A, which we do need to be aware of. So anything in a red box is the important stuff you need to know from the MART schemes. So um, as well as the chlorophyll A, which is the primary pigment within the reaction center, we have other pigments involved here. And the whole idea be behind having these other pigments is so that they can absorb different wavelengths of light from each other. Um, and this allows more energy to be absorbed from the light to be passed on to electrons. Now, you do need to be aware of some of the names of these different pigments. So the different pigments involved here are called accessory pigments. And the examples you need to be aware of are carotenoids, chlorophyll B and xanthophyll and chlorophyll. Um, and beta carotene as well. So xanthophyll and beta carotene are examples of the carotenoids, but you do get marks for either of them or any of them. So just make sure you know some of those examples as of accessory pigments. So the way that these work is first of all, these different pigments absorb different wavelengths of light or photons of light. It's really important to hear that you don't say they just absorb light. You have to say different wavelengths of photons of light. Um, so these accessory pigments, so they could be carotenoids, which could be xanthophyll or beta carotene, or they could be um, chlorophyll B, they pass on energy into that primary pigment at the bottom here, this chlorophyll A. And the range of accessory pigments that the, the photosystem has allows a range of wavelengths to be absorbed. Now the primary pigment, which is chlorophyll A, uh, this becomes excited by this energy that, is, that has been passed to it. And this energy that chlorophyll A has, it will pass it on to electrons and it will lose those electrons to the electron transport chain. And those electrons become excited to a higher energy level. And we're going to learn about how they're used a bit later on when we learn about the light dependent reaction in a little bit more detail. So for now, all we need to know is that those excited electrons will be used in the light dependent reaction, which you'll look at in the next couple of videos. So just to remind you, this is um, the different wavelengths of light that we have within the visible light spectrum. And I have seen it in a couple of times within suggest questions, uh, but these shorter wavelengths of light can penetrate into deeper water within the ocean. So, for example, those um, plants that will exist at those deeper waters will have different pigments to those that are closer to the surface because they will absorb different wavelengths of light. So just familiarise yourself with that and be aware that that could come up on suggest questions. But that is everything we need to know on photosynthetic pigments. Guys, please like and share the video and good luck with your exams.